Divorce lawyers of Reddit, what is the most insane, evil, funny, dumb way a spouse has tried to screw the other? Story one, another Redditor a few years ago gave a story about a couple getting divorced. I couldn't find the OP, but here's a quote from a website that covered it. Not me, but a neighbor. The couple got divorced and she got the house in the settlement. Only the house and the immediate house lot, not the surrounding land that went to the husband. The first thing he did was sell all the lumber off the rest of the land. She went from living in a nice forest to living in a clear cut. He wasn't done yet. Once the trees were gone, he sold off the topsoil, then the gravel under that. By the time he was done, her house was on a hill overlooking a barren landscape reminiscent of the lunar surface. This was years ago, and the place is still hideous. Story two, not my divorce, but my divorce lawyer told me about a case she was involved in where both clients were so petty that they had to all meet to argue over literally every single scrap of everything. The final object that neither would settle on was a ceramic rabbit statue, a really generic one from Home Depot or whatever. Zero sentimental value. But since it was the final item, neither side wanted to lose the last thing, and they dragged it out over three separate meetings for this one thing. I don't remember which ended up getting it, but once they settled it and signed everything, the winning party stuck it on their lawyer's desk as a gift and walked out. Story three. Friend was going through divorce from insane husband. He had been texting her pics of the gun he bought and threatening her. Police were called. Nothing they could do because it was only a picture. He was staying with a secret girlfriend at this point. She allowed him to go get his stuff from the house. She was scared to go back in the house alone. I went with her. First red flag was he had changed the locks. So we waited for locksmith to open the house and change the locks again. Well, when the door opens, we noticed all of the furniture was gone. So we carefully went upstairs in search of her cats. The entire second floor was empty. No cats, no furniture. Even her clothes were gone. Come to find out he hired a moving company to pack and take everything, even the food in the fridge. Finally found the cats. He had taken them to another vet in town and put them up for boarding under his sister's name, thinking she would not be able to find them. He was finally forced to disclose what happened to her possessions. He had them taken to a storage unit far away from the home. Story four. I don't practice divorce law, but I did an internship with a family law judge in law school that involved me sitting in on a lot of stuff. One divorced couple came in because the ex-husband wanted to lower his spousal support payments due to his lowered income, great financial responsibilities, and the fact that his ex-wife was declining to seek paid employment, all of which sounds reasonable on the face. It turned out that while his income had been lowered due to cuts, his new wife, who technically worked as his assistant and had done so prior to the divorce, was now making quadruple her salary, more than he ever had. He claimed that his ex-wife had unpaid renters living with her and could have money to survive if she charged them rent. It turned out they were the couple's shared 18-year-old twins who were living at home having just graduating high school and were going to keep living at home while starting college in the fall. It also later turned out that he allowed his stepdaughter and her two children to live with him and his wife rent-free and paid for her college. His ex-wife produced evidence that he told his own kids to figure out paying for college themselves. He claimed that his ex-wife worked as a nanny for free by choice and should be getting paid for work elsewhere. The kids she watched for free were their three joint grandchildren from their eldest child, two of which were severely disabled. He claimed that when he married his new wife, he gained over 15 new dependents, which was technically true. But those dependents were all in Mexico and included his new wife's grown siblings and their families, none of whom he had ever met. This dude was shocked when spousal support wasn't decreased. Story five, TLDR. My client's spouse accused him of giving his deceased wife cancer. I represented a guy who was on his second marriage. His first wife passed away from cancer. He and his kids were obviously devastated. My client was a pretty sensitive guy with a big heart. His second wife could be very charming, which was why he fell for her, but it was all a facade. Anyway, to make a long story about a lengthy divorce short, my client met a very kind and affectionate woman during his case. They really hit it off and were basically engaged, even though his divorce was far from over. The fiancé started having health problems and was diagnosed with a form of terminal cancer. Somehow the second wife found out about this and tried to use the cancer diagnosis against my client in court. She developed this crazy theory that my client had terminated his first wife by giving her cancer and that he was doing the same thing to his fiancé. The second wife's attorney, who was quite good, refused to be a party to it. The attorney never addressed the argument in court and didn't even ask the second wife any questions about it during testimony. Rather, the attorney informed the judge that the second wife wished to address the court directly about an issue. The judge allowed her to do so, in a highly irregular move. The second wife told her crazy conspiracy theory to the judge, adding that she was certain my client had tried to give her cancer at some point as well. I wish I had an artist's rendering of the scene, capturing the second wife's crazy eyes, her attorney's look of shame, embarrassment, the judge's look of confusion, and ennui and my look of awe-inspired disgust. Story six. 
I was an assistant for a family law practice, not a lawyer. So it was already a disaster of a divorce because the ex-husband was a banana. But it got so much worse when the wife started dating someone new with a severe cat allergy, like a year after they split up. Her psycho ex bought a cat on his time with the kids, except he's not allowed pets at his apartment. He sends the kids back to their mom's house with the cat and all its stuff. Mom is pissed because she didn't want a cat at all, plus her boyfriend is crazy allergic. She calls us asking what to do because her kids are bawling, saying that she can't get rid of their new sibling and she has the cat in the garage. Ex told kids, if mommy loves you, she'll let you keep the cat since daddy has not allowed cats at his house. Story 7. Paralegal for divorce lawyer. This one is morbid. We represented a guy who believed vehemently that his wife was assaulting the children. The authorities were involved. Child services was involved. It was never clear what the truth was or if anything at all was going on, but our client was sure. He shot his wife dead at a custody exchange in front of the children. He then sat down and waited for the authorities. We visited him in jail with his criminal defense attorney. As we were leaving, he told me, well, I guess the divorce is over now. And he laughed. This was the first time I had ever been speechless. Edit. This has gotten a lot of responses. I can't really reveal details or context here, but I can safely say that defending this action as heroic or understandable is an incorrect takeaway. There are no heroes here. The trauma this man put the children through is incredibly selfish, regardless of his intentions. There are so many other options that could have been explored, many of which were being explored when this happened. He abruptly put an end to all of them, making the truth forever impossible to discern. Edit 2. Where are they now? The children are in the custody of a family member. They are safe and well. Although we'll no doubt need extensive therapy as they get older. Guy is in jail. I'm unsure of his final sentence. However, I doubt he will ever leave. Edit 3. What did the kids say? Forensic interviews are super confidential. And this case didn't have the chance to go to a hearing. However, after multiple interviews with both children and the parents, neither the police, child services, guardian ad litem, or child advocate, recommended that the mother lose custody or visitation. Nor did they require it to be supervised. All of these matters were ongoing when the mother passed away. Story 8. She accused her ex-husband of SX.ally molesting their children while under the watchful eye of the nationally endorsed social workers who oversaw his contact with them, which was only required because he didn't have his own private accommodation at the time. She also said that his Indian flatmates were inherently dirty. After the obviously false child molestation suggestion, I warned her of the consequences of being caught lying about that. That is, permanent loss of custody. She fired me, but kept calling back using fake names to try and obtain free advice, which contradicted my advice. But everyone she called immediately spotted her. This was a long time ago, and now I specialize in insurance litigation, which is far less ugly. Story 9. I worked at a computer repair store as a sales technician. Had a guy come in with a desktop that he wanted Windows reinstalled. I asked him if he wanted me to back up all of his data first, and he told me that he had everything he wanted and just do the wipe. I put it in the queue, and he paid and left. I started it about an hour later, since an XP install was only about 45 minutes off the network. I didn't bother doing anything else except deleting the original partition and making a new one and installing Windows. About an hour after that, his wife came running in, asking if we had a computer with Smith as the last name. I told her I did, and she showed me her ID and said that her husband brought it in to try and destroy all the proof of him cheating and stealing money from their business. When she asked if I had wiped everything yet, I told her I just did a Windows install and didn't actually really wipe anything. I called her husband and told him the situation. I told him his wife was here to get the computer. He asked me if I reinstalled Windows like we spoke about, and I told him I had. He told me, I don't give a cow, give her the computer. There isn't anything left on it anyway. I said all right, and hung up. I told her that he said I could give it to her, and then explained to her how reinstalling Windows doesn't magically delete everything, and explained to her how I could recover all of her files in a couple of hours. I ended up staying late that night, and she bought me pizza and Mountain Dew. I ended up recovering every file he tried to have me destroy and made multiple copies for her. She ended up calling him from the store and reading off some of the messages he had tried to delete from his emails. I was worried that he might try to come back in and confront me, but nothing else ever came of it. Story 10. Personal experience, unbeknownst to me, my ex was having an affair. I worked a lot of hours, so I didn't pick up on it. We had always dreamed of buying a house on a huge local lake to retire in. We literally started shopping for houses and even toured a dozen or so. We found two well within our budget, but would need to sell our house first. My wife convinced me to take out a couple loans in my name and get a couple credit cards, again in my name. Most of the bills were in hers, and the mortgage was in hers, so I did. I spent about $1.25 in CC in loans to fully update our house and get it ready for market. As soon as the work was done, she told me she was leaving me and wanted to sell the house. Story 11. This one hits close to home because it happened between my parents. We had a family friend who was a lawyer, and my parents agreed that he would be the lawyer for both of them as a mediator. 
So as the assets were being divided, my dad got absolutely slammed. She was going to get the house, cars, half his retirement, and an insane amount of alimony to the tune of like $2,500 a month for the rest of her life. My dad has a good job as a municipal employee, but that was probably 70%-ish of his paycheck. Turns out that my mom and the family friend actually conspired to rip my dad off and make it seem like that's what a divorce settlement looks like. And she was going kick back more money under the table after the dust had settled. Dad just didn't know how these things worked. So after some convincing, he finally went out and got his own lawyer. He got a very fair divorce settlement after that. Mom still to this day can't understand why we don't talk to her much. Story 12. Most malicious thing I know of personally involved a coworker of mine. He was sleeping with a married woman, and ultimately the husband found out she was having an affair. Really ugly divorce ensues, during which they fought over a lot of assets, but the real point of contention was their dog, lovely GSD named Orion. Eventually, husband gets custody of the dog, and in under a month has the dog put down just to hurt her back for the affair. Edit. When I posted this, I thought this situation was a rarity and have shock and awe value from the cruelty at work. After reading the responses in this thread, not only am I saddened by how many pets get caught in the crossfire, but I am genuinely shocked by the length some people will go for petty vengeance. Story 13. Former divorce lawyer. Not so much insane, but unfortunately common accusing former spouse of molesting the children and domestic violence to retain full custody and get a restraining order to force spouse Uy of the marital home. This sets the new status quo for custody, which judges are reluctant to disrupt considerably down the road. Takes months, if not years, for accused spouse to prove his innocence, and CPS will often find evidence where none exists if accusing party is a good enough manipulator, I'll say, actor. Pretty horrendous long-term outcome for all parties. Kids are brainwashed against a strange parent when young. Later, they often grow to resent the accusing parent for poisoning their relationship with estranged parent. Kids often grow up with multitude of mental health issues. Probably one of the worst things a person can do to their children, all to win against their former spouse. Story 14. Not my story, but one I read here a couple of years ago. I really hope I don't butcher it as it's been a while, but here goes. There was a super wealthy guy that was a top exec at a Fortune 500 company who was getting a divorce, and it was rather nasty. This guy was pretty much set for life. He had a bunch of stock, houses, and assets in so many places. The ex-wife wanted everything she could possibly get. The husband came up with an idea that if she let him keep everything, he would give her half of his paycheck for the rest of his life. She quickly agreed because his checks were huge, and this also included any bonuses which were in the millions. As soon as the paperwork was finalized, he quit his job and started to work part-time at a sporting goods store. I can't remember which one. This story was told by another employee there, not the actual guy that got divorced. Anyway, he still had all of his assets, so he would drive to work in a super expensive car, and one day the employee asked how he could possibly afford that car. The guy said he was set for life and didn't even need to work at all, but every Friday when he got his paycheck, it made everything so worth it knowing his ex-wife would only be getting about $1.150 per check. Story 15. I work for a divorce attorney now, but the craziest thing came to my attention when I worked for the prosecuting attorney. This couple was breaking up and Mr. left the house. Mrs. went to work the next morning as usual. When she returned home in the evening, she found Mr. had been to the house and removed his clothing and belongings as she expected. What she didn't expect was that he had also gorilla glued her belongings together. He glued the TV remote to the table, the phone to its cradle, the couch pillows to the couch, and even glued the vacuum cleaner to the carpet. She called the police and reported this as property damage. The police went with her through the house, documenting dozens of items glued to various things. But for days, she was discovering random things, and she would call to amend or update her report. My GD oven mitts were glued to the wall. Or he glued the effing sheets together in the linen closet. I've seen people do and say really awful things to each other, but that was diabolical. Story 16. I just saw this on a YouTube video. The husband gave the wife everything material, house, cars, etc., in the divorce except his magic, the gathering collection. When he went to collect it, he found his wife had broken the seal on his MTG Alpha starter deck. This was worth about 20k USD at the time and currently for sale on various sites for around 50k. For context, as soon as you break the seal, the deck becomes worthless, and unless you get some of the insanely priced cards, like Black Lotus, you will lose a significant amount of money. So she literally got all the assets they accrued over the marriage and terminated the only thing of value this guy got out of total spite. Story 17, how about a wholesome, insane one? I an all, but this was told to me by my mom regarding the divorce she got from my dad. They couldn't settle on an alimony amount. Mom and her lawyer came in with a number. Dad countered with a number. They couldn't agree because my dad thought my mom should get twice the amount in alimony she was asking for. And my mom didn't want my dad to give her that much money for months. It took months for them to settle on a figure that appeased both of them. 
Even then, my mom puts aside the extra above what she wanted in case my dad ever has a financial emergency. And my dad puts aside the extra she didn't want in case my mom ever has a financial emergency. The funny thing is they don't know the other is putting the money aside for the other. My mom told me about her emergency stash and my dad told my brother about his emergency stash. Bro and I discussed it while talking about what nut jobs our parents are. Edit. I've gotten a lot of support for this response. Thank you. I'm not going to say that their divorce was perfect. It wasn't. There were still some hurt feelings and resentment from all parties involved. However, my parents, for all their flaws, both accepted their own responsibilities for the falling apart. I think it helps that they still loved each other deeply. They just weren't in love anymore. They have been friends since my mom was two and my dad was three, started dating when mom was 12 and dad was 13. They separated at the ages of 49 and 50. It makes sense that they grew apart. I've had a few people ask why they divorced in the first place. My dad had had a girlfriend for at least 15 years, possibly longer. My mom knew, but they agreed to not divorce until my younger brother had graduated high school. My dad got remarried to his girlfriend. My mom has also since remarried. All four of them get along famously now. The separation and divorce happened about 10 years ago. I'm very lucky to have four parents who care about me and who absolutely adore my own little dudes. Story 18. Have a friend who went through a nasty divorce and his ex was vengeful as hell, despite him having done nothing wrong like cheating, lying, etc. Basically, he got laid off from good job and the loss of status embarrassed her, especially as he took to being stay-at-home dad and their kids adored him. Never mind she had MBA and six-figure job herself. She would buy expensive cow on credit cards to show high expenses, then return it for cash or store credit so that the refund didn't go back on card so that she could try to get more support. To just get a job, he took one at Home Depot. He'd been an engineer at a tech company. Later on, he landed an IT consulting position that was part-time but paid about what he made at HD working full-time. She petitioned the courts to try and force him to have a full-time job, basically wanting to force him to spend 30 more hours to earn same. Part of his custody granted him dinner one night week with the kids, I, 5, 7 p.m. He asked for it to be school pickup to 7 p.m. instead, and she refused that even though from 3, 5, they were at home with a nanny who had to be paid for that time while mom was at work. Story 19. Worked at an airport. Big burly guy brings an ugly peach dog in a crate to the counter. He is clearly misty-eyed. Turns out wife got the dog in the divorce, and he has to send it to her, and she told him as soon as she gets it, she is putting it down. He asks if he can have some time with the dog before the flight, so they go out in the grass, and they both roll around in the grass, dog's tail just wagging away, not knowing anything about his future. The guy puts him back in the crate, drops him off the counter, says thanks, and then just walked out head down and just looking crushed. That was 30 years ago, and I still remember it like it was yesterday. Story 20. Edited for spelling as I was shaking while typing this out earlier today. My dad was physically and verbally abusive to my mom and my siblings. He never sex alley abused us, but he was serially unfaithful to my mom and had a nasty candy habit. He left rehab so many times I don't know why she stuck with him that long. When I was in seventh grade, he tried to terminate my mom and she finally files for divorce. And none of his outrageous claims are believed. But yeah, I was a knucklehead like my dad. Nobody could tell me right from wrong. I was just following the example I had and it wasn't good. Mom told me to straighten up or go live with dad. And like a fool, I chose poorly. It was a year of pure hell. His philosophy was, the beatings will continue until morale improves, and he took it literally. He also remarried another candy addict right away. I suspect to make my mom jealous, but it backfired. During that year, he beat me, his wife, and even put my stepbrother's face through a glass coffee table when he tried to defend her from him. I decide I want to go back to live with mom, and it outraged my dad. He went off the rails for a bit. So he asked me one morning how I felt, and I told him to his face I wanted to live with mom because he was an abuse of a whole. Bad idea. As I got beat, Bad. Mom calls me that night and asks why we weren't at the courthouse. Turns out he skipped the court date and said he couldn't take off work because he wanted to keep custody to make my mom miserable. This happened two or three more times. Finally, I wisened up. And the next time he asked me, I told him I changed my mind and wanted to stay with him. So he says, hop in the car. We get to the courthouse. My mom lived two hours away from his place because he moved right after he got engaged. So inside the courtroom, the judge asks me which parent I want to live with. And I say, my mom. He asked why I was changing my mind from a year ago, and I detailed all the abuse from the last year, including intentionally skipping court dates after asking me how I was going to answer. Judge glares at my dad and dismissed me from the courtroom, and I have to sit in the hallway on the bench alone. Ten minutes later, my dad stomps out, grabs me by the arm, and drags me to the car, saying the judge called me a liar and ruled in favor of my dad. But he lied and actually kidnapped me and beat my peach two hours back to his place. Oddly, it wasn't ruled a kidnapping because the judge didn't sign the ruling yet or else my mom never pressed charges on him, but he never went to jail. She came the next Friday night with a deputy to pick me up, his new wife, 
I refused to call her my stepmom, caught me packing a few belongings and told him, and he left work to try to beat me again and stop me before she could get into town. But I climbed out my bedroom window onto the roof and told him I would jump off and run away to the police station if he tried to stop me. Just as he was yelling at me, the deputy arrived and my mom was pulling up behind him, so crisis averted. I was a different teenager after that, not perfect, but more respectful. Ended up working at 15 to help pay bills while I finished high school. I hated my life as a teenager, but it made me into the man I am now. Joined the service a month after high school and married two years later, promising I would break the chain of violence and abuse. We just celebrated 25 years in March, and I've never stricken my wife or cheated on her. By God's grace, it will be that way the rest of my life. Story 21. Not an attorney heard this one from a friend of mine. He was put in the middle of his parents' divorce. His mom is a teacher in Ontario, Canada, and she gets paid very well, 120 k per year. His dad is just a general laborer and made about 55 k per year. When they got divorced, he gave her the house free and clear with the understanding that when she retires, he will get 55% of her pension to offset his interest in the house. She agrees, of course. She has to retire for him to get his money. Fast forward a few years and his mom retires but never tells his dad. The son finds out and told his mom, Hey, you are retired. You have to start giving dad his money, she tells the son. Don't tell your dad, please. Fast forward a few more years. He finds out his dad is in financial difficulty because of the downturn in the economy. He backhanded tells his dad that his mom has been retired for a few years now. So he contacts his attorney. Now she is screwed. She pissed off the family divorce court because she agreed to this and is now trying to screw him over. In the end, he gets 65% of her pension for the rest of their lives, and she has to pay him all the money that she owes him. Story 22. A friend's ex-wife and he settled their divorce with her, getting the house, a hefty chunk of retirement, all the gifted jewelry, and his Harley she had gifted him for his birthday. A few weeks later, a robbery occurred, and the only thing that was stolen was the jewelry that he had gifted her, which was intended for their daughter. She tried to file an insurance claim on the jewelry, but forgot to get appraisals and add, as riders, so the max insurance paid was $1,500 for over $20,000 of jewelry. Suspicion is she staged it but is now stuck with stolen jewelry she can't legally sell nor wear nor give to the daughter without tipping the dad off to the scam. Story 23. Wow, today is my day, another where to start. The person who hid a quarter million dollars from a business sale so it wouldn't be included in the equalization payment while providing frank disclosure on the actual sale number. The person who made a fake prostitution ad for their ex as proof that they were not a good parent without considering that I would want to know why they browsed prostitution ads during their parenting time. The ones who spent thousands of dollars working out the appropriate access, custody, and support terms for their dog? Hard to say. Unreasonable people keep my lights on. Add it to add the one that bothered me the most. It wasn't my file, but I was in court that day for another matter. A local police officer had a family law conference. Coincidentally, a bunch of officers from his force and neighboring forces decided to attend family court that day and stand in the hall outside the one family law courtroom. A dozen officers in full uniform, there to provide support to their brother, I guess. His ex had to walk through a gauntlet of uniformed officers to get to court. This one really bothered me and still does. If I had been her lawyer, I would have raised a cow storm for trying to intimate my client and potentially trying to intimidate me. Story 24. Not a lawyer, just grew up with a poor family situation. My mom was an evil mastermind with this divorce, let me tell you, so my parents had been separated but living in the same house for a while, and it was around the time of year the family would normally go for a camping trip, Canada Day, I believe. She convinced my dad that we would break the trip up and he would get a week. Then when he returned, she would get a week with us, the three kids. Secretly during my dad's week, she got her friends to help clear the entire house out, and I literally mean clear it out. There was nothing left, not a single clothes hanger, no couches, TVs, quite literally nothing. She chose this vacation setup really well, too. Camping meant we didn't need money or have access to cell service, which she took advantage of as well, and emptied the bank accounts and hid all the money away. She didn't stop there, though. She also maxed out lines of credit and all credit cards. Normally, this would take a while, but she was smart as hell in this approach. Earlier, when planning this divorce, she had convinced my dad to quit his job, quite high paying, I should add, to start a company. This company was still new and needed a ton of expenses paid, so the banks didn't think twice about this ridiculous amount of money being transferred as it wasn't out of the norm anyways from their new setup with the company. Then, when it came time for my dad's trip to end, she told him he needed to call her when he got back in cell range. Upon calling, she told him that she was on the way out in the same direction anyways, so we could just meet halfway to spare us kids a bit of driving time on our way to the next trip, which was odd considering after a week of camping, we all wanted to shower and clean up, but she was very adamant. We met up and swapped vehicles, then my dad was on the way home alone. 
while we were off to hide away at a location different than where she had told my dad. When he got home, he thought we had been robbed. It didn't sink in. He called the cops and started phoning family because of how empty the house was. He broke down and didn't know what to do. That's when my mom's dad came over and told him the truth. He said she left him and took everything. She hit us and I believe tried to steal us, but that part is a bit fuzzy for me. Eventually, it somewhat caught up with my mom. The judge was shocked at what she did. She even went as far as trying to convince us kids that my dad was abusive and had us interrogated by a cop wanting us to lie about him. The whole situation was crazy. She ended up blowing all the money on fancy trips and shopping sprees with her friends. And when the judge ordered her to pay it back, she fled the country. Now she lives in Australia and doesn't have to pay anything. Story 25. Doubt this will be seen, but a family friend was the lawyer on a pretty cut and dry divorce case. He was representing the husband and he felt pretty bad for him. No bad history between the two, but even standard cases can get messy. Apparently, his wife was being seriously sharky and trying to take basically everything. The guy was at wit's end. Our family friend was driving behind him on the way to court when he crashed his truck into an SUV. Didn't seem too bad, flipped the SUV on its side, but he was already in it helping the other driver out. It was right in front of the courthouse, so no big deal. Lots of cops around to help. Then our family friend realized something concerning. The SUV looked a lot like the guy's wife's SUV. Before he could say anything, he saw the cops suddenly swarm the guy and pin him to the ground. While everyone watched on thinking this guy was helping, he actually was stabbing his wife repeatedly with a screwdriver. She unfortunately didn't survive. Pretty sure that was the last divorce case our family friend took. TLDR divorce lawyer witnesses his client literally screw his spouse to death. Story 26. Child of traumatic divorce here. There's so many, and I mean so many things I could post on this thread about how flipping terrible my parents were to each other, but this takes the cake. My parents were separated in the process of divorcing and had split custody between my brother and I. We were five and seven at the time. My dad didn't have his own place yet. So when it was his turn to be with us, he came back to our house, the one he purchased, mind you, and my mom was supposed to leave. One weekend, they were arguing over something and it got so bad that my mom wouldn't leave and told my dad she would call the police something she apparently did a lot to get her way, which after growing up with her, I can attest she did this a lot unnecessarily to control us. So she left, called the police, told them my father was dangerous and had a gun. My dad was in the army and we had plenty guns, locked in a safe, of course. Of course, the police were just doing their job and took my mom at face value. It went so fast for my brother and I, watching TV with my dad to the police, knocking at our door, my dad opening the door and getting pepper sprayed without the cops saying anything. And then my dad locked the door, and the cops couldn't bust it down. So they came around back and broke our sliding glass door in so they could arrest my dad in our front yard with all our neighbors watching. I didn't really understand what was happening at the time, but it was traumatizing for sure. Then my mom tried to get full custody of us in their actual divorce. And thank God the judge ruled for split custody. My whole childhood was poor, honestly. BC, all they did was explain very deep and emotionally complex situations to very young children who just wanted their parents to love each other. But yeah, I've never quite forgiven my mom for that one. Story 27. I read about a case where the wife was trying to take half of a guy's business and millions in personal assets, only to find out that the business had been moved into his son's name years earlier. And the guy donated all their savings, millions of dollars, to a children's hospital in his soon-to-be ex-wife's name so she couldn't get the money. The judge said what he did was technically legal since it was community property and no freeze had been placed on it yet, but was morally unconscionable. Lawyer said in his entire life, he never saw a bigger smile on a man's face. He just kept saying, I just wanted to help the children and smiling. Story 28. Not a lawyer, but my mom forged divorce papers to cheat on my dad. For two years, I got my peach beat whenever I brought it up. Edit. While this is the most upvotes I've gotten so far, I'm not satisfied with it seeing as all these upvotes come from the idea that I am being abused. Let me clear this up. I am far from abused. I have a radio, TV, Xbox One, guitar, and iPhone 11 all in my room. I also have Asperger's, which my mom has done a great job of helping me through. It was a weak time for my family, and we have slowly made progress to fix things since. Edit 2. Everyone's saying I'm abused or just jackasses. I know I'm not being abused or have been abused. If I thought it was abuse, the police know who I am and I would have already called them. This comment is getting deleted soon. Trying to get me to admit to going through abuse I didn't go through is just pissing me off, and I do not have to take this. Story 29. Not a lawyer, but child of divorced parents. Mom got custody of me and my brother. She told my dad she would make us hate him. Went from a big house to a three-bedroom apartment and grew up poor. Only saw my dad three times a year and talked to him on the phone once a week for an hour. Turns out that's what she asked for in court, but she lied and said our dad didn't want to see or talk to us. He paid her child support and alimony every month and she worked full time. We grew up with no Wi-Fi or cable, no sports or after-school activities. And I never went to a summer camp. 
Apparently, we also didn't have insurance for like two years when I was 12. Turns out she was pocketing all the money and keeping it in her savings. Apparently, around the divorce hearing, when I didn't have insurance, she had 12K in savings. But the judge didn't see that as a red flag. We did hate our dad until we got older and realized he was trying to give us stuff the whole time and offering to send us to summer camp. But she refused. Even after her hoarding all that money and us not growing up with our dad, he still paid for my college and books and bought me a car when mine broke down. I ended up stopping a relationship with my mom when I found out she called me a worker in order to defend my brother's behavior. She didn't bother to reach out even though she's the parent. Later, I contacted her on and off trying to fix the relationship. She never bought a book for uni and also refused to let me use her tax info to get a better loan for school when I had to my last year of university. In the end, her bitterness messed up her over because she no longer has a daughter and she has a son who yells at her and uses her for free rent. Story 30. TLDR client's ex disappeared her dog to hurt her. Ended up in jail, I was contacted by a woman after her judgment was final. Her and her ex had a pretty short marriage of maybe seven, eight years. In the divorce, she was awarded four years of spousal support, alimony, at a modest dollar 400 slash month or something like that. They also had a dog. Their divorce said wife would have primary custody of the dog, but husband could request time pretty much whenever he wanted. Wife then promptly moved across the country to be with her family. In the ensuing several years, husband never once requested time with the dog. He paid his alimony, and the two went on peacefully hating each other like most divorced couples. Fast forward to the final few months of his spousal support obligation. Husband gets into his feels and tells wife he's not going to pay the final few months of spousal support. His basis is wife is dating, and because she has a boyfriend, he shouldn't have to pay his court-ordered spousal support. She tells him no, that's not how any of this works, and she tells him to pay. She later tells me that she really didn't give a fudge about a couple months of support, and she was going to drop it. A few weeks later, husband requests visitation with the dog. First time in years. Wife is surprised, but hey, that's his right. So they make plans to meet at an airport where he can pick up the dog and take her home for a few weeks. Husband is an airport employee. More on that later. The day after the exchange, husband, in his magnificent wisdom, texts my client and says that if she does not repay her the tilde 20K in spousal support he's paid over the last several years, she will never see the dog again. She flips out, tells him she needs the dog back at the end of his three weeks, and if he doesn't, she will go to the court. He appears to back off and they make plans for him to return the dog. The day before the scheduled exchange, husband tells wife that he can't make the exchange as he's in Mexico. Wife asks him when she can expect the dog back. No response. The day after the original exchange date, husband texts wife and says he's back home in the States. And the dog is gone. It ran away from him in Mexico and was lost. He apparently hung around for a few hours looking and then caught his plan home. This is when she brings me in. Now a quick word about normal remedies here. In family court, we basically resolve everything regarding property with money. But with a dog, which is property, that won't really solve anything. So we decide to pursue contempt of court, which is a pseudo-criminal action. So basically, even though it is a family court judge, we treat it like a trial. There is an arraignment, criminal protections, the whole nine yards. Now, any family law attorney who knows their cow will tell you contempt actions are basically just empty threats. Most family court judges aren't going to send people to jail over divorce nonsense. But my client insists because she's convinced this Mensa candidate is just hiding the dog somewhere. So I proceed with the contempt action. His lawyer treats the whole thing as a huge insult to everyone's intelligence. They show up to the arraignment literally having prepared nothing. Lawyer and him are just sitting there with smug grins on their face, expecting the matter to be dismissed. Lo and behold, I actually know how to string a few sentences together, and the judge asks for his plea. His lawyer again scoffs with the pure rudeness of the concept his client did anything wrong and we set a trial date. During the prep phase, I subpoena what I can and try to nail down this guy's story. When combined with my client's background info, things pretty much looked like this. 1. Husband picked up dog at Atlanta airport. He claims he then flew with the dog home to LA and then later flew with the dog to Mexico. 2. My client pointed out that you need a certificate to fly with a dog, and she had provided him with no certificate, nor had he contacted the dog's vet for a flight certificate. 3. So how did the dog get to Mexico? He then changed the story to state he drove the dog to Houston and then his mother drove from Texas to Cancun with the dog while he flew. For you readers at home, Cancun is roughly a 40-hour drive from Texas. Four, clearly all of this sounds bananas. So when we call him on it, he states that's how it happened. While in Cancun, they called a repairman to fix the AC, and the repairman left the door open. Dog runs away. Poof. This apparently happened the day before the scheduled exchange. Five, so simple little me, I look at the timeline here. If he was going to be returning the dog to wife the day after it's lost, surely he would have had a plane ticket from Cancun to Atlanta for the next day, right? But he called wife from L.A. the day after the exchange to say the dog was gone. Well, show me the airline ticket change. Husband says no. Won't do it. Gotcha, bad person. You never intended to return the dog, did you? 
case rested. After disproving his entire itinerary, I also got the flipping give me 20k or you'll never see the dog again text admitted into evidence, which if his attorney wasn't such an arrogant thorn, probably could have been kicked. Oh well, you old shower. At the end of the trial, my guy actually gets convicted of contempt of court, sentenced to five days in jail. After he left, both the court clerk and court reporter told me they had never seen such a clearly guilty person. I actually saw the flipping court staff shaking their head when he was answering my questions on cross. That's amazing. For my fellow lawyers, another fun trial tidbit. Several of opposing counsel objections were raised several times and repeatedly overruled. At one point, he requested a continuance of the trial after we had rested our arguments. His basis was that his client and he had no idea that the court would allow the text message and other evidence, and they needed time to prepare defense for that evidence. Yes, you read that right. The court said on the record, well, counsel, that might be an argument for your insurance carrier, but it doesn't work here. It was flipping amazing. In the end, wife never did get her poor dog back. The prevailing theory is that he just gave the dog to a friend or something and couldn't ask for it back. But he did spend a whopping three hours in jail and had to pay my fees. One final kicker, though. He was a TSA employee. A TSA employee who suddenly found himself with a criminal record. Whoopsie. Play stupid games. Win stupid prizes. Story 31. Not a divorce lawyer, but my mom used to have these girl party weekends where all these women would come over. My mom would inject different fruits with vodka with a needle she got from the hospital she worked at. Well, my parents had a rocky marriage, and I guess it showed at school when I was young because Child Protective Services showed up at my school and then our door. My mom falsely accused my dad of using the needle that she randomly found in the house for injecting candy and went as far as getting a restraining order put on him so I couldn't see him for months. Six months later, they were back together, and my dad did a candy test that found no candy in his system. Stupidness. Story 32. Not me, but my cousin is a vet whose friend went through a divorce. She was friends with the wife and husband, but the wife was a nasty bad person. Their dog had puppies a month prior to the divorce, and the husband wanted all the dogs. She gets them, and instead of selling the puppies, brings them to my cousin, saying she wants all six, I believe, puppies, and the mother put down. My cousin takes them and says she's do it, and the wife just leaves. Little does she know my cousin snuck them all out the back door with help from all her co-workers and gave the puppies to the husband. This happened about four, five years ago, so sorry for the vague details. Story 33. Uh, I was a divorce paralegal for 15 years. The worst opposing party we ever had represented himself. He cheated and left his wife, then proceeded to file for custody. Of the dog. After two hearings just about the dog, the judge orders that they share the dog, alternating one week at a time. On his first round of visitation, he collects this sweet dog and then immediately has it put to sleep. The following week, he gives ex-wife a canister with the dog's ashes. Obviously, she was devastated. It was heartbreaking. The judge was not happy. He sanctioned this man and then gave literally everything to the wife in the judgment. This guy was a, such a nutball. He even tried to claim the condiments in the fridge as property. Literally wrote it out in his property claim. Ketchup, mustard, mayo. He also claimed that wife's close relationship toys should be awarded to him. Real classy guy? Story 34. Not a lawyer, but a child of divorce. My parents owned a couple duplexes in town as well as our house. They had saved enough up to pay a property off in full, and my dad convinced my mom that it was better to pay off one of the duplexes instead of the house. A couple months later, he files for divorce and only asks for the paid-off property. He got it lived in one side and rented out the other and stuck my mom with two kids and three mortgages. And of course refused to pay child support for my sister because she wasn't his bio daughter even though he had legally adopted her. Still makes me feel icky how conniving he was. Story 35. I'm no longer practicing, but when I was active, I practiced in a small firm. We represented the wife in a divorce against her husband who was a very prominent businessman. As a show of force by the husband, he purchased the building where our offices were located and proceeded to make small but annoying changes. Parking spaces were moved to furthest spots. Elevator would randomly be down for maintenance. Our offices were located on the top floor. Cleaning schedule and crews would sporadically change. The firm's lease also happened to end during the divorce representation, and we were given a notice to vacate in the middle of the winter holidays. After our departure, husband put up signage of his company on the outside of the building where our offices used to be located. Story 36. My sister and her ex-husband had agreed in arbitration that he would keep the house and car and that she would keep the furniture and electronics. My dad and I rented a U-Haul to help her go get her stuff. We figured the amount of stuff she would get would be enough to get about $1.10-15K off Craigslist. We arrived at the house to find only an Ikea futon, a smaller TV than they had, an old iMac, and all the outdoor furniture destroyed. We were so devastated for her. She decided she wanted to close that venomous chapter of her life, so she just took her losses rather than fight for stupid possessions. Happy ending? She finished optometry school and became an optometrist, found a great husband, and is raising two awesome kids.